that's what really makes this Dash AI Max really well performance. You can tailor it to suit your needs. Hi guys, it's Brett here from Hearns Hobbies and today I'd like to talk to you about the Dash electronic speed controller, the AI Max. Uh, this one here is primarily designed for your uh, eight scale and, and big scale stuff uh, with a with a amperage of 220 amps, a maximum burst of 1000 amps, and that'll run from 4 to 6S. So it'll work not only in your, in your bashers, if you're upgrading your um, 8 scale basher, or your 10 scale with a big power unit, to your uh, 8 scale racer, buggy or druggy like I've got here today. So I'm gonna run you through uh, how I've got it fitted and the basic setup of it, including pro plugging in a program box and some of the tuning parameters that we use for racing. So let's get stuck into it. Here you can see I've got the speed controller fitted in, nestled nicely just behind the servo in between the motor here on this Hotbody's E819RS. Uh, I've got the sensor cable plugged in, got a matching uh, Dash 1900 KV motor, you can see here that I've got the pinning gear off of the motor and I usually do that when I'm setting up and calibrating a speed controller to ensure that the car's not going to take off or I'll operate it inadvertently off the bench. So let's have a look at how we go about calibrating the radio. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn our radios, I've got my transmitter here, turn our transmitter on, wait for it to be all fired up, make sure all the trims and throttles, all throttle settings are all in very neutral settings. Um, then I'm going to turn on the speed controller. I'm going to hold in the set button for about two seconds until the light on it goes to red, right it is now. I'm going to apply a full brake, listen for a beep. Beep. Then we're going to go to full throttle. Two beeps, and then we'll go back to neutral. Three beeps. So that's as easy as it is calibrating the Dash AI Max. And if we turn it off and turn it back on again, you'll see that the servo will, the servo is operational and the motor. Perfect. So that's from full throttle to neutral to brake. Next thing we're going to do, I'll turn off the radio as I'm going to plug in the dash program box. So this is an LCD program device that we use. Um, and it's unique to this, this model speed controller, the AI Max. It's an additional product from the speed controller, but this is how we use all of our um, settings and program functions to get the most performance, feel, and, and race options. So I'm gonna go and plug that into the speed controller, like so. Excuse me while this is just a little bit fiddly. It's quite a small compact plug. There we go. Now, without the radio turned on, I can turn the speed controller on and we'll start getting parameters on our program box. So I'll walk you through the menu as I'm seeing it as well. Okay, so to dash I, I, AI Max ESC, the HD program box. Then it goes in and shows me what firmware I've got. Then I go into further. Now I can choose either the modified or the blinky mode. And given the fact that I'm, I'm not racing a blinky class, it's an open class, then I'll put it to, to modify mode, which will allow me to adjust extra parameters such as boost and turbo. So we'll go into it, and then we can start looking through. And the first thing that comes up is punch. Now, a lot of people are familiar with punch, but that is the sort of initial throttle feel or acceleration that we get sort of off of corners or off of the first range of the throttle. And that can be adjusted from one, which would be a very soft setting, a very gentle takeoff, probably good for really low traction, up to 30, which would be really aggressive and really quite quite bitey, which could be used maybe in an on-road setting, uh, maybe various drag racing applications or your speed runs. Next parameter that we're going to look at is PWM. Uh, that's the pulse width mod modulation, or dry, commonly referred to as drive frequency. So on this speed controller here, quite, quite advanced 32-bit speed controller, we can go up to as high as 16K and down as low as 1, 1K hertz. Now that's the switching of the, the three-phase power unit, and that's how we get, again, this is about throttle feel and, and control of the, of the car and, and the speed. So 
I usually got mine in the off-road car at 16%. That gives me a really nice linear and controlled feel. Um, the only trade-off with that, I suppose, is you're gonna generate a little bit more heat in the motor and the speed controller. But with the off-road car, it's not under a lot of demand. If it was an on-road application like a GTE8, then I might have that turned down a little bit to give the car a little bit more aggressive feel on the throttle um, and also keep the temperatures down. So the next item that we'll look along is compress. Now again, this is the compress, it relates to the throttle, uh, the throttle curve and that's really about the, the initial feel of the throttle. Um, most of the parameters in this are about feel, so they're not necessarily about making it faster or slower. This is about getting the nice feel and what makes you comfortable driving your car. So I've got this set here, you can see it's an asterisk one at 15. That'll go up to 30 steps, that'll make it really very aggressive at the bottom um, and taper off towards the top end. Whereas if you choose number one, that's no compression, that's almost linear and that'll give you a very gentle start. Uh, where it's asterisk, that's the factory set parameters and that's usually where I'm pretty comfortable in this car at the moment. Next item we're looking at, brake frequency. Again, it's exactly the same as the drive frequency, the PWM. Um, this one is on the brakes and again, it's probably my main tuning factor for the brakes. Um, it'll give it a really nice feel drag brake. It'll give it a really nice feel when you're applying the brakes. Very smooth and very good for finding traction and limits. Again, if you want more more effective or more aggressive brakes, uh, like an on-road application, again, I'll probably have that turned down to probably 8K or 4K, and that will give it a, a lot more bite and a lot more aggressive braking. Next item we've got is brake range. So this is the range of the operation of the brakes. Um, it's set again at the asterisk mark here at five, and that's pretty much where I'm comfortable with. It's not something that I play around very often, but it's definitely there. All these things are there for you to, to adjust and play and get to your liking. Initial brake. So this is the initial brake force. When the first time that you apply the brakes, we've got 10% of brake force applied to the motor. Again, just for feel. Uh, then we've got brake feel is the next one. Now this is when you're into the brakes, again, it's almost like a, a throttle curve. So it takes it from being linear, like a compression, but this is on the brake scale. So five is where it's factory set. Again, it's not something I play with much, but I'd love to in the future have a good, good feel on track and see exactly how it can improve or yeah, not make my car worse, I suppose, if I go the wrong way. Maximum brake force. Now this is an off-road car, so I've got this set at 62.5. Now this value can go down from 25% all the way up to 100%. Um, being an off-road car with minimal traction, I don't want to just hit the brakes and have it all lock up and cause excess stress on the, on the gearboxes and the, and the diffs. So I've got that set at 62.5 and that gives me the ability to the brake at the end of the straight and into the corners without the car just locking up. Effective, nice effective braking. Next parameter we're looking at is drag brake. So this is the amount of static resistance, if you like, applied to the motor in the neutral state. So, so you come into a rolling stop, um, drag brake is the amount of resistance on the motor without you actually applying the brake. It's a very effective uh, tool in weight transfer. With nearly zero offering none, so as soon as you back off the car, just rolling freely, um, up to sort of 30% where the car is actually braking quite a lot, which sounds good in theory, but it can upset the car on track and make it really uneasy to drive. So I've got this one set 11, and that's probably along with the um, PWM and uh, the pulse width uh, modulation changes, drag brake is probably one of the most effective changes that I'll use on the, on the program box itself. Next, we've got boost. Now this works as applying timing to the motor and boost works uh, in the first part of the throttle. So this works for your infield, getting out of corners and increasing the speed of the motor. In off-road, it's not something that I use a great deal because the car just doesn't have enough traction and the motor is so fast as it is, it's not something that I'm ever needing. So boost is not something that we really use in off-road. Boost start, again, that's where it starts on the throttle. So it starts at 30%. If you imagine your, your 
so you're a third into the throttle and then that's when the if you've got a boost parameter set that's when it starts to apply the timing and indeed increasing the power the next one you'll have is the boost ramp now again i've got that one switched off but that can be exactly how fast it's applying that boost next one is turbo the turbo is something that i do use you can see that's set at 20 percent and that's something that's applied nearly at full throttle so that again that that point's adjustable we'll get to that in a second but turbo is a basically a turbocharger for your motor so when i'm a wide open throttle coming down the straight is 20 degrees of 20 percent of timing applied to the motor and that's increasing the, the power that it can get down the straight so it's in a wide open throttle application and that's really going to help it get down the straight straight with a huge amount of speed that is something that we adjust quite a bit again to the size of the track the temperature um, and and your ability to, to drive the car well obviously somebody who's heavy on the throttle is going to struggle with a lot of turbo make the car unsettled and wheel spin a lot where somebody who's very gentle on the throttle and can really feel it won't actually be using the wide open throttle that much so turbo won't be affecting them next parameter turbo start so you can see here it's 85 percent now that's 85 percent of the throttle open on the transmitter that's when the turbo is going to start to kick in turbo delay so this is a time setting so you can have it so it's not going to be working on the infield so much again it depends how aggressive you are with the throttle um, it's going to save you inadvertently hitting the, the throttle on a jump or something turbo being applied too much power and the car being really hard to drive and unstable turbo uprate this is the the way that so i've got 20 percent turbo the turbo uprate is the speed in which that 20 percent is applied um, you can see I've got a number five there. That's the factory setting. Um, towards down lower is more gentle settings and up higher, I think 15 step series. That makes it really quite aggressive and really quite compressed. Down rate again, that's the turbo deactivation mode. So when you um, come off of the wide open throttle, like full throttle and you, and you release, say at the end of the straight and you're rolling, that's the amount that the turbo is shut out of the car. So I wouldn't say it's drag brake, but it's almost like an engine brake at from high speed. Running forward and brake, being a race, being a race car used on the racetrack, we're not actually allowed to use reverse. So reverse is disabled, but this speed controller can do forward reverse and forward reverse and brake setting um, and forward and brake only. Um, so that really enables it to be very versatile in a, a bashing application or even if you're just out at the track practicing um, it might save you going out and marshalling your own car or getting stuck because you can reverse out of spots but for racing applications we generally don't use reverse next one is cutoff voltage being that it's a lipo powered car the speed controller is set with safety devices to ensure that we don't flatten the battery too much because once lipos get too flat, they can be inadvertently damaged um, and into a uh, usable space where they won't actually be recharged. So it'll make them make them faulty. Um, they'll be undercharged, and you won't be able to get any more power back in them. I've got that set at three volts. Again, that's an adjustable parameter. Generally for racing, I might even have that shut off because I know that the car's not going to go flat, and it's just this, a safety net there that I don't really need. But for practice example, it saves me from over flattening the batteries and damaging them. ESC overheat, again, it's a really good safety net. And that, again, for racing, when I, I know that the car's well tuned and everything, I'll probably have that shut off because it's a safety net that I, I won't be using. But for practice or setting the car up, I always have it set conservatively. And this one's set at 105 degrees. And that will save me causing any damage to the speed controller if the gearing's wrong, if I've got too much turbo on, and if I've just run the car for too long, because you can just drive it to a point where it, will, it could fail. Neutral range. Now this is to make the sensitivity of the, of the neutral point. Some people like to have more, uh, given I've got a, a fairly good quality radio, which is in pretty good condition, I really like to feel the car start to move as soon as I as soon as I apply any throttle movement. So I like to have a very small neutral band so that the car is quite sensitive. Next one we've come along is BEC voltage. Now this is the amount of voltage that 
the speed controller lets into the receiver to power up your servos and your transponders and your fans. So I've got this one set at 7.4 volts and this will be adjustable from 6 volts which is a pretty general application, depends on if your receiver can handle it, up to 7.4 and that's just pretty much making my fans run faster and boosting the servo for maximum performance. Uh, next one that we've come across is motor rotation. So this can operate in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Uh, either or, obviously we've got it set up in this car and this car requires the way that I've got the diffs installed, I need to run the motor in a counterclockwise uh, direction to get the car moving forward when I want it to. And last but not least, last but not least is maximum power now this is a very handy tuning tool and that is if the track changes dramatically it might get really dusty and just a hundred percent power is too much you can actually just turn it down and that limits the amount of power that can actually go to your motor it sounds counter proactive but it can actually make the car easier to drive and make your lap times faster and make it easier to put down the power so Sometimes it's a handy little tuning device to actually turn your power down. It might only be 5%, might be 10%. Yeah, that's a very handy little tool. And that is it. So you can see there we've got about 20 different parameters to set. And that's what really makes this Dash AI Max really well performance. You can tailor it to suit your needs. So whether it's bashing, racing, uh, on-road racing, off-road racing, uh, at the skate park you can really set it up and customize it to suit your needs that unplugged i'd like to say that's the end of of the video and i hope you've uh, understood exactly what i've done please feel free to to comment and put any questions down below and we'll get to answering them i'm brett thanks for watching